Yeah, you know, Ed was saying how powerful Hawaii is. Last week, Saturday, we had a global assembly and I was on a call after that from someone in Mesquite, Texas, asking for prayer. He had brought 100, 400 uh, uh, football athletes from different schools together to come and to pray and a whole bunch of them got saved. I said, hey, of course, because you serve them Texas steak. I mean, how can you not get saved after feeding them steak, right? But he was inspired because what happened here in Hawaii, Epulikako, now he is running to become the mayor in Mesquite, Texas. And what motivated him was Duke Iona, Dar uh, Gary Okino, and Norman Sakamoto. Come on, people. The spirit of aloha is alive and well impacting people. And I, um, so God is moving. So Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles can see we're living in an evil day. You don't have to have eyesight to see it. You just got to feel it. You just got to wake up in the morning. We're living in an evil day. However, the spirit of God is moving. So I invited someone, hopefully he's on, uh, Mackenzie Milton, because he represents the state of Hawaii. The, the question is, is it biblical? Is it possible in this evil day to make a difference? In the spirit of Aloha, I say amen. Mackenzie Milton not only led the Mililani Trojans to the state championship in 19, uh, 2014, he also took a team that was a losing team in Central Florida. He turned it around, transformed it. The culture, not just the football culture, the stuff behind the scenes that he stood for courageously, being the minority, being one person, going against the status quo. He not only changed a football team, he not only transformed a, a school campus, he, he and the largest school campus in, in Florida, he transformed the Orlando, Florida into a place and a, a people of hope in spite of Disneyland. And he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again in Tallahassee. And so I asked him to join us. Aloha McKenzie, thanks for joining us. Uh, because God is doing a miracle. And we will bear witness to that this coming Sunday uh, in, uh, at 1.30 Hawaii time. Before I call him up, let me introduce uh, you to him. He's a graduate, 2015, local boy, Mililani High School, from the west side of the island of Oahu. Kapolei, right outside of Nanakuli. But I settled for that. We cool. We cool. We roll. We west side. Um, and I want to play this video. I want to play this video of why I asked him to join us this morning and why we should pray. That's number one. How should we respond to these evil days? One is prayer. But him and his family have lived out some things that I think we all can glean from in this evil day. So, but first, I want to play the video. Um, here we go. Check it out. The reason I got hurt is because adversity doesn't define you. It's what you do when adversity strikes. It shows what you're really about. In 2018, Mackenzie Milton was all about winning. Milton end zone touchdown. Milton will keep it and he reaches. Milton gonna run. Touchdown. Ranked in the top 10. I had won 23 straight games um, in a row with him as our, our starting quarterback. He's a guy that, in my mind, uh, at that point, um, should have been sitting in New York City at the Heisman ceremony. That all changed on a single snap, November 23rd, 2018. Four for six on third down. Milton sprinting out. Ooh, he's cut down at the 25. Down on the field, and that doesn't look good. Just saw my knee dangling. Like I just like, was kind of in shock, and then I just looked up and couldn't look at it anymore. It looks as though maybe, you know, we're not going to just lose a quarterback for the rest of the day, but beyond. Your heart sinks. You immediately just think about the man, not the player. And you understand, you know, the immediacy of what's going on and how in the blink of an eye, a life can be changed. Went up to him and just said, I love you. In the locker room, UCF medical staff checked for any pulse in Milton's right leg for blood flow. There was none. Rushed to the hospital, 
he saw his mother, who had been at the game, just before surgery. I didn't cry like when I got hurt. I didn't cry like when I got in the ambulance, but when I saw my mom, I just broke down. He just looked in my eyes and I looked in his eyes. And he, he was scared and he said, I'm in pain, mom. And I just held his hand, you know, I was right there with him. The violence of the hit dislocated Milton's knee, tore his popliteal artery, cutting off blood flow and created extensive nerve damage. Doctors operated to save his leg that night. I didn't know if I was gonna wake up and you know my leg be there or not. They had my legs covered up. You know, I pulled the sheet back and it was completely wrapped up. I saw my toe sticking out. I couldn't really see the rest of my leg, and you know I was grateful for that. The next challenge was the nerve damage to make sure Milton had movement. I remember three or four days later when his toes moved. Just the response of the medical staff, how joyous they were with it. I knew it was a big deal. If your nerve doesn't come back, then there's still a risk of amputation. Just the fact that my toes were wiggling a little, you know, showed that the nerve was still there and still had a chance to heal. Already, football was in his mind. Okay. I was just set on, you know, I got to play again. Like, I just, I just really believed that I was going to. Slowly, slowly, careful, don't hit the bar. While the first surgery was successful, the road ahead would be grueling. It's a humbling feeling, like, being able to run around, jump, cut everywhere, to, you know, not being able to walk, not being able to bathe yourself. Yeah, it was hard. The rehab began. After nearly a year taking steps, building strength, gaining motion, Milton suffered his most serious setback. Not a lot of people know about it. I got an infection in my leg, which resulted in three more surgeries in my leg. At that point, I was like, damn, like maybe, you know, maybe I shouldn't be playing. Maybe I shouldn't be rehabbing this knee. But he continued, persisted. Let's go, let's go. And in August 2020, he got the news. He was cleared to play. I just kind of felt goosebumps, you know? Like I felt like a freshman again, running out there. I thank God as I was jogging out there, I didn't walk, never walk on the field. Well, his whole spirit was back. And not that football completes him, because that's the furthest from the truth but you could see um, and feel the joy. This season, while one of his best friends, Knights quarterback Dylan Gabriel, is among the nation's passing leaders, Milton has run the scout team in practice, helping in every way he can. To Mackenzie Milton, there is a reason for the challenge, to show others a purpose and a path forward. If I can be a motivation to kids that, you know, go through something tough, have a tough injury or anything for that matter, you can overcome it with hard work, prayer, whatever you believe in. I believe I'll play football again. Thanks for watching ESPN. Amen. It's been three long years. This Sunday, he would take the field against Notre Dame. He's now at Florida State University. He represents this beautiful state of Hawaii. And I asked him, in spite of his very busy schedule, if he can join us. I'm not sure if his parents, they're, they're driving from Orlando to Tallahassee now. Not sure if they're online. But I, I wanted to take this time to pray. Mackenzie, before we pray for you, anything that you want? Well, thanks again. Uh, and Mackenzie, I think your story is so powerful that I, I, I would yield my whatever 12 minutes I have at the global conference to put a spotlight on this. Because this is this and, and, and the, the things that your family represent is so huge. Um, just a thank you. So proud of you. Anything you want to share with us before we pray for you and your family? Um, well, thank you for, you know, giving me this opportunity to, to speak to everybody and, you know, kind of just like how you saw in the video. Um, for me, the biggest thing just in my whole process, being in Florida, 
being at a new a new place is just um just embrace just embracing whatever life life throws at you whatever you know whatever cross you're called to bear and, and for me that's been you know being up here in Florida and then dealing with my injury and rehabbing throughout that process and and just working at it diligently every day and to me where wherever I go I just want to leave leave the jersey I'm in we always talk about leaving the jersey you in you're in in a better place so for me that's all I try to try to do whether it's at UCF Florida State just work diligently every day and how I'm approaching my craft and how I'm treating treating people around me and you know just truly get to know my teammates and what they're about and you know to me that's was yielded you know great results and you know just really made things fun for me so awesome man not sure mom and dad is will uh, able to join us but uh, we got one of our linemen here online and we know your lineman has meant the deal of protecting you so we've got a, a was once was once someone was once known at uh as our fiercest lineman uh danny danny katoa danny are you online are you with us uh in this hour if so uh, i want to ask danny to, to, to pray for you and uh, all of us who stand in agreement that we will bear witness to a miracle people 50 percent of the people that have his types of injuries don't 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 get to keep their leg I mean, this thing is huge. And the doctors are like, you know, Mackenzie, rather than focus on his healing, he says, I'm going to play football. How soon can I play football? Something to that extent. The doctor says, no, let's get your nerves working. But he was so adamant that God wasn't finished with him. He faced an evil day on November 23rd, 2018. But in spite of that, and for three long years, he fought the good fight of fate in spite of an evil days, dealing with the mental, emotional, physical challenge. God is good. He's leaning on God. He's trusting in God. This is what the ecclesia is all about. So I want to ask Danny. Thanks, Danny, for joining us to just pray protection, blessings, and miracles upon, you know, our uh, brother McKenzie and especially uh, his parents and especially with his mom being able to watch him go through that and knowing that he wants to go through this again and the cost that it may take. Uh, so, Danny, would you mind praying for Kenzie, praying for uh, his parents, praying for the family and praying for the team as they, yeah, as they prepare for the season open again? Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Alan. I appreciate the opportunity. And I just, um, as I was watching the video, just want to say this before I pray is that, um, you know, God rewards those who are faithful. And um, Mackenzie, your faithfulness is going to pay out dividends in this senior year. So, Father, I just, uh, come in agreement with everyone here on this line as we cover the Milton Ohana in this season, Lord, that they're in. You've taken them through the test, Father God, to become a testimony. And we just pray a hedge of protection, your hand of protection uh, over Milton, that as he walks out, that as he plays, that he knows that he's not just playing for Florida State, Father God, but that he's representing your kingdom, Lord. And just through his faithfulness of rehabbing surgeries after surgery, Father God. Father, I just pray that you bless his heart with all the desires, Lord, Father God. And, and, and his faithfulness just keeps speaking so much and, and uh, uh, to all of us, Father. And, and so, Father, let him know that, that tomorrow is not just about him. It's about representing Hawaii. It's about representing his family. It's about representing the kingdom. There's so much bigger uh, prizes to pray for, Father God. And so I just lift up his parents too as they travel. We pray for travel mercies uh, there, Father God. What a celebration that it will be tomorrow as he runs out on the stadium tomorrow for three years of long suffering and enduring, Father God. Um, it's, it's such a time like today to be able to 
to testify in, in the midst of the darkness that's happening in our world today, Lord. He gets to testify of the goodness of your glory, Father God. And, and not only, so we, we don't just want him to show up tomorrow, Father. We don't want him to just play the game tomorrow, but show, show up and show up. You show up and you show out through him tomorrow, uh, Father God. And so we're just grateful, Lord, that we have a young man who's been faithful, who's been diligent, who's been patient, uh, and so, Father, we just pray a releasing of extra anointing over him tomorrow, Father God, and to play injury-free, Father, to remove any uh, 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 fear or doubt or shame that he may have, Father God, upon him. Just bind that in the heavenly realm and release nothing but your anointing over him, uh, Father God, that he do magical tomorrow, that he that he not only just represent his family tomorrow, uh, Father God, but, but represent Hawaii in a mighty way to be able to spark a revelation of the spirit of aloha nationwide and worldwide, Father God. We pray all these things in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you, uh, Danny. Um, before we wrap up, before we wrap up, in order to win the championship like he did in a peach bowl, taking a team, he had to take a bunch of individuals that was highly skilled, but come from different political, religious, racial diversity and bring them together as a team. And the word I felt like uh, for all of us today in this evil day is, is when I got his shirt, by the way, one Ohana, it's the number 10, his number, one Ohana, that's it. So a couple of things that we can learn from Mackenzie and his family in this evil day, one Ohana forever. Vaccination, non-vaccination, on the fence, it doesn't matter. One Ohana forever. One team, one heart. It's the ecclesia. Number two, love each other fiercely. I sent you guys a couple of links in the chat. Watch that because that's how he touched an entire city of Orlando. Love each other fiercely, great respect and love for one another, not letting anything come between them. And that's even with him and Dylan Gabriel. I mean, it's a remarkable story. Uh, number three, the mark of a remarkable leader is when you come into a place that looks one way, when you leave it, you leave it in a better place. That's our calling. That's our purpose. In spite of this evil day, it is our kuleana. God has given us dominion from the very beginning to leave this place a better place for generations yet to be born. Because if not us, then who? If not now, then when? If not here, then where? You know, but Alan, it's difficult. Listen, Mackenzie Milton did that. He did that at Mililani High School. He did that at uh, UCF, and he's do it again in Tallahassee. He not only did it one time, he's doing it a number of times. So if this young man, as a marketplace minister, can change cities, come on, people. We can do it because it's the same Father, same Son, same Holy Spirit. So I wanted to bring him in, not just for us to pray, but for his life and his family. The way he lives out of life is what the ecclesia is all about. So that's why I wanted to bring a man. So Mackenzie, thank you so much. Mackenzie, uh, there's someone with a, a closing a word for you before we leave. It's Sean Nakamoto. Auntie and I was driving out to Nanakuli that day when you were playing. Uh, Sean, Uncle Sean was the first guy that called me. That's how I found out about your injury. Sean, quick, we're already tapping into our ex executive uh XCOM meeting. So in, in 60 seconds or 90 seconds, what's the word? Thanks, you got? Alan. Appreciate it. Real fast. Two things. I actually found that text on November 23rd, 2018 at 1223 PM that I called you and you had mentioned about it and you activated the prayer team. And Mackenzie, I just want to let you know, this is more than football, but what you are doing is glorifying God in your actions, in your responses, in your leadership, and how you're building other people up. And I watched the movie Facing the Giants the other day because I'm in lockdown because I have COVID. And Danny Cato on the back of his head, his big head, had that with God, all things are possible. And Mackenzie, you have been a proven factor 
for them. You are a walking, talking, living miracle that God's going to use in more than football, more than everything else. He's going to use you to lift his name up and exalt him. So I just bless you, brother man. Go out, kick the Irish Okole, and I got the chop for you. Ah, 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 ah. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you, brother. John, you got to get a little bit more excited, brother. You look kind of depressed over there. Too much cold. Sorry about it. Trying to keep my oxygen level at 91 or so, you know. <laughs> in, in, in closing, one, one more thing I, I felt as Sean was sharing. One more thing as we close. Uh, uh, Mackenzie had a very tough freshman year. His, his sophomore year was up in a fence. And uh, sorry, Mackenzie, I just can, uh, can I share? Can I share what we talked about privately? Just so that yeah, absolutely. Know. Okay, everybody, here, here's the deal. Um, uh, Mackenzie, uh, did, Mackenzie um, was thinking about not going back his sophomore year to, to Florida State, you know, University of yes, Central Florida. He wanted to leave his calling on the football field and, and, and join us in ministry to serve God and make the world a better place. And I had a talk with him. I said, Mackenzie, you got a bigger platform than, than, than we have here. And God has called you for such a time as this. And what, what's the point, Alan? What a point if, if, if he didn't obey God and go forth and confront the darkness and the evil days that was, was in Central Florida, we wouldn't have this story today. We wouldn't have the championship. We wouldn't have this guy. And so how many of us, we're, we're right smack in, in, in this evil day and we feel like we cannot take another step forward. Listen, this man is an example. God is using him to be an inspiration and a blessing for all of that. So with that said, um, people, this is what the Ecclesia is about. It's about creating a transformation of culture, community of aloha, to transform ourselves, society, for the better, for generations that to be born. So I just wanted to share that. Hopefully, all of you be encouraged. Fight the good fight. Uh, keep the faith. We're living in evil days, but darkness is not the problem. Lack of light is. So I want to thank all of you guys for joining well, Mackenzie, thank you so much for taking time out. Um, I'll be contacting mom and dad. Give them our love as you guys gather. Uh, Ellie, thank you. Uh, Zek team, uh, again, uh, thank you for uh, allowing us this extra time this morning so that we can pray, uh, lift up uh, Mackenzie, and just be edified uh, as, as a way maker, promise keeper, miracle worker. Mackenzie, love you. Everybody in Toha, Hawaii. Love you, Uncle. Thank you, so thank much. you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Until we meet again, Malama Pono Huiho. The game is Sunday, this Sunday, CBS, 1.30 Hawaii time. Be praying and be ready to raise a hallelujah. Tomahawk chop, Mackenzie. Tomahawk chop, bro. <laughs> Tomahawk chop. All right. Yes, <laughs> Love you, Mackenzie. Love you, everybody. Aloha. Love you, Uncle. Aloha. Love you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Aloha. 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 Aloha.